Welcome to the Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is... I am occasionally known as Reverend Steve, the founder of the Church of Ed Wood. These days, I'm primarily known as May Lynn. I am a trans woman, married, uh, parent, stay-at-home mom, podcaster, lover of fine cheeses, raconteur, and uh, the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is a real thing worth a Google. This episode is dedicated to victims of the coronavirus. And uh, xenophobia. That's, that's how this week's movie started. Uh, a movie I like to call Canadian Screaming, the movie. Yes. That's what I like to call this week's film. It's horrible. Uh, but we're not there yet. It's episode 433 of the podcast, and uh, tomorrow will be two weeks that I have been on estrogen and testosterone blockers. I yes. am officially transitioning into a woman, and I said, man, I can't wait to start the podcast talking about being on estrogen. That's going to be a great intro the podcast. Well, it, that is definitely how I'm going to start it. Well, unless some massive historical thing happens between then and now, but that definitely won't happen. There's only one thing to talk about, me being on estrogen. So we're currently doing the podcast every other week, which means that we missed a big time bit of news and historical event that we have to talk about in the beginning of the podcast because this is a big time deal. It affects everybody. It affects everyone. We have to talk about it. Bunny. Yes. Are you ready to talk about this? Sure. Okay. In a landmark legal decision, an historic legal decision, oh. Ohio State University now owns the trademark of the word the. Really? Yes. The word the. the is owned by Ohio State University. This actually happened. I am being 100% serious. This story affects us all. Okay, how did they get ownership of the word the? So, um, apparently Ohio State likes to go by the phrase, the Ohio State University, which, who cares, I don't, but apparently they do, and so they applied for the, and received the copyright, and now it has a trademark for the, for the word the, for the word the, specifically. They have a trademark for the word the as it applies to sports apparel. Okay. So they, they they officially own the copyright for the word B as it, it in terms of sports apparel. So I guess Arizona State University can't go by the Arizona State because Ohio State University has the has the trademark for the word Z. Well wouldn't it wouldn't it be like a crazy ass trip if Ohio State got all Metallica about it? Yeah. Like, Guardians of the Galaxy shirts say Guardians of a Galaxy. Because <laughs> Ohio State might, might sue them. I think that'd be neat. How weird. How do you get, how do you land that? That's incredible. Yeah, only because the world is insane now and nothing makes any sense anymore. That's how. Ohio State University being given the trademark for the word they, be. This is obviously the biggest news story right now, but without a doubt. This is this. I haven't been watching the news, but I'm assuming this is what everybody's talking about. In fact, I've seen people all over the place uh, protesting Ohio State. And yes, they're, they're receiving this a trademark. At least I think that that's what they're protesting. And, and and people are putting up pictures to adopt Ohio State. 
Weird. Yeah. Very bizarre. Um. Uh, you want to talk about abortion, bunny? Sure. I feel like we should. I feel like we should. And maybe we can talk about it in a fun conversation. But, uh. uh. Come here, come here, come here, Amber. I need uh, I need more feminine perspectives other than mine. What do you have to say about abortion, Amber? Mm-hmm. Uter up, not uter old white men. Yeah, like literally the baby could be nothing outside of the uterus. Mm-hmm. They have more say for a thing that can't even speak. Mm-hmm. I have a brain to speak. I have a lot of say in my uterus and the rest of my body. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that my uterus, uh, the baby, well, no, the fetus in my uterus can uh, open carry freely. Yeah. Well, yes, you've lost body autonomy, and you no longer have control over what happens to your own body. But my feet is king. But at least you won't see a. At least little kids won't see a rainbow flag hanging in their room that they're boarded up in while someone tries to. Yes. Yep. So, hooray! Yay, America! <laughs> Just in time for the Fourth of July. On my birthday, they did that on my birthday. They did do it on your birthday, people. Your that birthday was rude. Was Right? Very yeah. freaking rude. I was like, I gained the right to drink, but not the right over my body. Yep. Isn't that something? Yeah, now I gotta worry about them turning back LGBT stuff. And then it's like, am I gonna be in trouble for being brown eventually? We'll find out. Yep. No, no, because you're with another brown person, now your mother and I, we might be in trouble for the interracial relationship. Yep. We definitely will. Technically, I am American, so that's it. One plus. But. Technically, they can work it out. Uh, yeah. That's why I added the technically. Yeah. Um, just to let you know, I have two uh, sausage McMuffins, or egg McMuffins over here, and then a whole bag of popcorn over here, and I'm eating throughout the entire podcast. I know that that's not um, professional, and I know that. When it comes to this podcast, people expect a certain level of professionalism. Yes. Yes, they do. <laughs> but ever since I started um, uh, the estrogen and testosterone blockers, I am never not hungry. <coughs> I just have to eat 24-7. Puberty. <coughs> like, uh, suddenly my body is like a... <coughs> Lord of the Rings, we've been through puberty, yes. But what about second puberty? And so that sucks. And uh, the doctor who prescribed me the estrogen, she's like, oh, you know, um, one of the major side effects is uh, mood swings and random crying. And I'm like, so what's new? (laughs) At least now, when it happens, I can say, I have a reason. Pill. I'm taking pills and not getting shot at the moment, and I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, So, okay. The way I see the current state of the Supreme Court is, this is is like, it's like I've been wondering why all of a sudden there's this big, like the Supreme Court is, like, suddenly every day is just some new way that they're fucking up. Um, yes, but the see it is, is the pressure is on Terrence, Clarence Thomas right now because his wife Ginny Weasley Thomas is a batshit crazy QAnon insurrectionist far right crowd boy supporting ass face, and it's but okay, okay, but let's stop right there. Let's stop right there first and establish that Ginny Thomas is a long-time lunatic. Like, this is nothing new for her. She was, she was back in the 70s in a self-help cult. Mm-hmm. 
for which charges were pressed. And now, really so for her, it's just like, you know, new day, same cult kind of a thing. When I when I heard that uh, Ginny Weasley Thomas was in a, a like a self help cult, my first thought was, oh shit, was he in, she in that sex cult with the young blonde chick from Smallville? Was she in that sex cult? Maybe. Oh, no, not the sex cult. She but she way- she might have dabbled in that in between. They, they, they should try and get it. I bet the Scientologists would get her. Probably. Yeah, right? They don't want her. Yeah, they don't want her. But her nuts ness has definitely affected Clarence Thomas and his work on the highest court in the land. And so for Clarence Thomas and the Republicans, it's basically like a fire sale. Like, yeah. Uh, oh shit! They found me out quick before they before they stop us before they uh finally make me accountable for my actions. Let's pass them out bad shit and insane, insane stuff while we still can. Yes. So abortion is legal. Teachers can pray in school. Right. Um, the environment is even more fucked than it was before. Open, um, open carry is a federal law. Open carry is a federal law. Um, they passed, uh, what was the other one? Like, the federal government can now arrest you and try you for things that happen on tribal land? I have that, like, not heard that one yet. No, I, I don't doubt what, it, but I haven't heard it yet. What was the other one? Oh, yeah, Miranda Wright. They don't really matter anymore. If the police arrest yeah. you and they say the Miranda rights, oh, that's fine. That's fine. It's not a big deal. That was the other one. There's like all of this fucked up shit happening right now. And, and along with well, what they are planning on covering. Mm-hmm. You know, this is just the damage that they have done right now and recently. While we're still talking about Roe and not talking about much of any of the other shit, mm-hmm. look, we're fucked. We absolutely are. There, there is no way that we're not going to go through a great period of darkness under the fascist state. There's no way because there's nobody who is doing anything to fucking stop it. Nothing. Nothing at all. Through all of it, through all of it, the Democrats have been like, what can we do? Um, yeah. Our vice president on Twitter today said that, uh, that, like, it's the people's responsibility to vote for leaders that will help fight what what is happening in, in government and the only way to stop this is by voting in Democrats and it's like that's what we did we yeah. did that now and yet how is it that a, a majority of Americans are now ruling over we're under minority rule right now and it's fucked up yes we voted you all in and you're still not doing anything uh huh no, no, no. But what they are doing is the day the road decision comes down, the fucking Democratic Party stands outside of the Supreme Court and sings, God bless America, because they passed a gun law prohibiting hamsters from getting handguns. Yeah. And then, and then the thing that pisses me off. In other words, a gun that- law that's not really worth much. But they're going to stand there and sing, God bless America, while half of the fucking population becomes secondhand citizens. Yeah. The thing that upsets me is that I just know for a fact that, you know, tomorrow, um, in like the next episode of the podcast, two weeks from now, we could be recording that episode and, oh, hey, let's talk about all the other things that were passed. Gay people are now illegal. Trans people are being hunted down. Uh, 
interracial marriage is against the law now, and yet Biden would still be, oh, violence is not the answer. We need to read the reach across the aisle and to yeah. compromise with our Republican brothers. Yeah, so the Democrats get anti-abortion Quayar into office. Joe Biden, this is awesome. This is fucking awesome. Joe Biden makes a deal with Mitch McConnell. Yep. Like, right with that sentence, I have a problem. Okay? So he is going to seat an anti-abortion, basically Republican. I mean, the, the D and the, and the R thing, like, really hardly matters anymore. To a lifetime judicial seat so that later, you know, sometime later, when Joe Biden wants to appoint somebody else, Mitch McConnell won't, tra won't, won't challenge it. We're just going to trust Mitch on that. Ridiculous that he's still trying to reach across the aisle. And he's out here saying, um, like, he has, for his entire life, up until recently, Joe Biden has been anti abortion. In the yeah. you know, 80s and 90s, he was voting against abortion and wanted abortion to be illegal. And so now he's out here saying, like, oh, women have a fundamental right. Women have a fundamental right. That's my Joe Biden. Women have a fundamental right to abortion. But I'm not going to do anything to stop it. Bye. Yeah. And he leaves. And it's like, okay, well, that definitely says that without saying anything, you've told us your opinion. Because yeah. you're not doing anything to stop this. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. But it's, but it's us, because we have to vote for more Democrats to not do anything. Oh, you gotta get out there and vote. We did. And you should be in charge now, but you're not. Yeah. You're not doing anything at all. Like like I have been posting on a lot of the Democrat forums, you know, the Democrats have told me that there is nothing that they can do so many times that I believe them. And I'm in, you you I'm convinced in me. Of, uh, you convinced me. There's nothing you could do. Why should I'm I vote for you? Of, I'm in a lot of trans groups and a lot of trans female groups on Facebook and um, trans Twitter and stuff. Um, and what I'm hearing from people is that, like, we're next. That's what I'm hearing a lot of. There's a lot of panic in um, the trans world and a lot of trans people like, just to be safe, you should be stocking up on your medicine. You should be making sure that legal arrangements and yada, yada, yada. And if you're married, you need to make sure that like really well, horrible stuff. I, I, I think shit's going to explode so quickly that the idea of who next isn't really gonna quite apply. Yeah. You know, like you're next by what? Like a day? Mm -hmm. You know, and then they do something horrible to another marginalized group? Yeah. You know, I think the next, I they're think definitely the next, coming after you. They're coming after all of us now. Yeah. I think the next thing that the Republicans are gonna do is they're just gonna make um, hey, uh, gay people, trans people, and immigrants, they're now classified as abortion. Yeah. And are illegal. So, so there you go. We're living under minority rule right now. The far right don't have a majority in our government, and yet they're 100% in charge of our entire government. That's not a democracy. Oh, no. Democracy is over. And, and again, that's, that's like, 
what's the point in even voting anymore? You know, so like there is there is literally nothing we can do about it. There's nothing to do but to go through it and let it get violent. Because it's going to get violent see. on its own. And it's like the Democrats are doing nothing but campaigning on it. Oh, yeah. Send the money. All they're, all they're doing is raising money, and that's it. I'm so hungry, Bunny, all of the time. Yeah. I'm so hungry. This estrogen. I mean, I am growing. <coughs> New appendages, so I understand why my body is just like wanting to eat all of the time. I get it. It's just I'm so hungry. So what else is going on? Uh, what, what else? What, what other? No, no, no. What other bodily changes are happening? Oh, um, a lot of it's only been two weeks, so it's difficult to tell. I do. I, I do believe that I've, I've been acting more emotional. Um, anything can make me cry. So that sucks. Um, and I, I feel like I'm getting a bit more tired during the day, like in the afternoon. Usually I felt the same throughout a day, but now, like, it, it, I just... In the afternoon, I just want to take a nap. And I occasionally get headaches, but beyond that... Yeah, that's a, Jeannie raises a good point. So is that the medication, or are you just getting old? Yeah, that's another thing, too. Is that like, I'm, I'm in my 40s, so these are all... Because you, you're really 40s. not sharing any experiences here that, that I'm not experiencing. <laughs> yeah, so... <coughs> The thing is that I've only been on it for two weeks. The changes will start happening like months to it, and so I'm it, like, like I'm I'm looking in the mirror, looking to see, oh, is there are there any changes yet? Are there any changes yet? But it's it, but it, it's a it's a it's a marathon. It, it's a long marathon and not a short race. So I, it, there's not much changes right now, other than. I am hungry 24-7 and need to keep eating. Besides that, everything's good. It, but it should be a couple more months until I get actual breasts that aren't plastic. They add to Amazon. You know, I have fake breasts. But, yeah, I'm exhausted all the time. And, and are, there, are there particular foods... That you're gr- that you're gravitating to? No. Uh, well, I've been eating a lot more popcorn. A lot more popcorn. Yeah. I want burgers all of the time, and it's just a really difficult time to want to eat so many burgers because the hamburger prices are through the freaking roof right now. Yeah. Suddenly, I can't make a hamburger helper 24-7, which I bet my kids are excited to hear. But, uh, 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 but no, there, there aren't any, like, weird cravings. I have heard from a lot of other trans women that they do get, like, strange-ass cravings for stuff. But, no, I, I just, I just want to eat, period. Yeah. All of the time. It doesn't even matter what. I just need to eat. Uh. So that's exci- I do feel though like I'm glowing just all of the time. Not, yeah. It, not in like a good skin sort of way, but just in the I, I just feel like I'm 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 more positive, more <coughs> I I'm radiating love is the way that I like <laughs> and to it see shows. it. I, I, I'm, and it shows in your pictures. It does. Yes. Yeah, it's a real smile. It's very. It's so nice to finally just look in the mirror and see myself. I feel like I haven't seen myself in a really long time. Yeah. You know? But it's really nice. It's 
really nice. It gets to the point now where like, oh, I gotta run to the bank really quick and then run to the post office. And I just go, it, it, it gets to the point where if I'm mail presenting, it feels weird. Yeah. So like I just put on just some random pants and a t-shirt and I don't put on makeup and I don't put in my boots. And I just go out and it's like, oh my God, I can use my normal voice. I don't have I don't have my purse. This is odd. So that's I'm excited about that. Uh, so tired, so out of it, all of the time. Oh, I saw the freaking Elvis movie. Oh yeah. 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 First off, it's almost like three hours long. Oh god. Secondly, it's m mostly about Elvis's manager, or Colonel Tom Parker. Yeah. It's kind of like, oh, who's Tom Hanks, Venus. right? Yeah. Oh, there's a movie about Venus and Serena Williams, and then it's really all about their dad. Yeah. It kind of felt like that. It says Elvis, and there's Elvis songs. This is the Colonel Tom Parker story. So, uh,. Okay, so in the movie La La Land, it's a musical film all about how one white guy. Ten minute warning. Oh, I see that. One white guy is the greatest jazz player of all time. White people are the only people that play jazz, and he saves jazz. Yes. White guy saving jazz. Uh, so according according to Boz Lerman Elvis. Um, Elvis Presley was one of the biggest civil rights leaders of all time, and he stopped racism. Oh, really? Yeah. Elvis ended racism. He brought blacks and whites together, and he was a hero, and oh, he was so broken up when Martin Luther King died, and he, he just loved black people, and he, he really fought racism throughout America. What a hero! He ended racism! That being said, when Elvis started singing Suspicious Minds, I did decide that he would sing along in the theater because <laughs> that song's fucking awesome. <coughs> yeah. Love, love that So, song. like, was, was that's what the movie was kind of covering? Oh, it... A large portion of it was about Elvis and racism and civil rights. And it's like, okay, I feel like this is a bit of a stretch. The way that it felt to me was, uh, well, hey there, I'm Elvis. And because this movie's coming out in 2022, this is all about how I love black people. And it's like, okay, I, I don't think that Elvis was as Black Lives Matter as this movie would lead us to believe. Elvis always struck me as just too drugged out to really know what he was doing at any fucking point. And he just got put places. That's another thing, too. It talks a lot about how Elvis was, you know, a hero of civil rights and barely talks about uh, substance abuse. Yeah. And that pissed me off. There were a lot of things the movie, it, there were a lot of things I hoped to be in the movie that they really didn't show. They didn't show his shitty movies. Right. They didn't show him dying on a toilet. They didn't show him uh, meeting Andy Kaufman and saying that Andy Kaufman was his favorite Elvis impersonator. They didn't mention his obsession with 13-year-old uh, girls? With the movie Money Python and the Holy Grail. They didn't show him meeting Dolores Fuller. Not once did it mention Vampira. The whole movie was false. Yes. Plus, uh, uh, I love Tom Hanks. I love him very much. He's an amazing man. David S. Pumpkins. But he was all over the place. Sometimes he was bouncing off the walls so much as like the evil bad guy, Colonel Tom Parker, that it's like, you might as well have just have gotten Jim Carrey to play. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, hell's this, my boy. We are going to be... He's got this weird accent. And it's not until the end of the movie that you realize that they finally mention the fact that he's, like, actually not American. And he's speaking I... the truth about his past. But the whole movie, he's talking like he's fucking... Like, he's talking almost like he's a poor Johnson. I, I have come up with, right now... While we're doing this, the movie that Tom Hanks really, really needs to do next. A drama. A serious, oh, I don't know, coming of, coming of age, but like we're talking old age, okay? Mm-hmm. Bachelor Party 2. That is such a great idea. So he's he's dealing with his because Tony contains dead now, so he's like dealing with his dead wife and what they have gone through through the years, and which of his friends are in prison, you know, and Adrian Zamed definitely white collar criminal. Mm-hmm. Definitely white collar criminal, right? You know, so he's he's like he's like rubbing elbows with Jeffrey Cohen, you know. Adrian Zemet. Now that yeah. is a name I've not heard in a long time. Yes, a long time. A long time. Well, there was the moment where you know Tom Hanks and Adrian Zemed. Just like that. Just like that. Do you think Tom ever calls Adrian anymore? Probably not the fuck. Um, I don't know. I imagine that um um I'd like to also think that Tom Hanks and Corey Feldman still talk because of the verb. Yeah. I bet they're yeah. buds. Hang out all the time. Hey, you Nobody. Wanna in, uh, hey, do you want to be in Forrest Gump with me? <laughs> and he's like, no, I'm good. You can have this one. <laughs> nah, Cor- Nobody talks to Corey Feldman anymore. He's just gotten too fucking weird. Yeah. Oh, so, so that's the intro. Almost. Almost. We've got about three and a half minutes left. Zoom kick this out and we re, re, redo. Yeah, we're going to be doing chap in a little bit. It's going to be a little bit different. A lot of it's going to be talking about me. A lot of it's going to be just. Um, I'm going to be reading directly from Wikipedia. For a You're going to what? Reason. I'm going to be reading directly. I'm going to be reading Wikipedia. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to be reading. From Wikipedia, the free online encyclopedia that anyone can edit. Is it going to be a dramatic reading? Kind of. Um, it'll make sense in the context of what else is happening in chap. Okay. And this week's movie. Um, this week's movie almost broke me. Dude. Yeah. It almost. It, it almost broke me. I was this close to just losing it. Okay, I was I was high as fuck, and I was really enjoying it. I was, I was really enjoying I this movie. High. Neither do I drink. We were kind of like doing a um, uh, a show, you know, with people. Around. Mystery well, Science yes. Theater. Yeah, we we were ripping this movie up some yeah. good time during the movie. Yeah. yeah. I hate this week's movie so bad. So I, I was having a lot of fun with it. Yeah, yeah. We're having fun with it. It's a horrible movie, but it is historically horrible. Yes. You you don't remember Insight? No, I don't remember Insight. By the Council of Churches? No, I don't remember that at all. That would either come on before or after Davy Goliath, depending. No, I don't remember it at all. Oh my god. 
I probably tuned out. Maybe it was more of a local. Film. Well, it was a lot like this movie. I, I don't think so because Groove Tube, the the whole, the whole drug dealer Cheech and Chong ripoff section of the movie Groove Tube. Was a was basically a ripoff of Insight at the end. Groove tube. So I don't know if it was. I don't think we have. I'm not sure. I think we might have. We absolutely should if we had. We might have done it with Kentucky Fried Movie. Yeah. I remember we did Kentucky Fried Movie. I love Amazon Women on the Moon. It's a really good parody of Cat Women on the Moon. Yeah. I'm going to get you some of that green cheese. <laughs> uh, so, so that's it for our intro. We're going to take a quick little break. Uh, Zoom's going to kick me off soon, and then we're going to head right into Steve Historic Approximations. We're going to be talking about Muppets. It's going to be very cool. So. We will see you in just a second. I'm impressed that it hasn't cut off yet less than a minute. Yeah. So, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Well, now you got to find the right phrase to be saying to be cut off on. Like that. <laughs> I think I got it. I think I nailed it. So everybody, everybody who's still following the stream, because the stream's not shutting off, I think I just nailed the shit out of that. Because it's mostly just need a, a matter of starting up Zoom again, which only takes a minute to, like, eh, talk over it, I guess. I mean, it's, like, long enough for it to get a little bit boring, but, like, not long enough to, like, have something set up to play. Because it would be looking for things to play in the one to two minute range. Mm -hmm. Twice or three times. Well, that's a good spot to put a little commercial. <laughs> and he's in chat. What? I said that's, a, that's enough time to do a, a little commercial. For what? And then, yeah, and then, well, I, I, then I have I'm to... Okay, I don't know what I just did there. 